Thank you. Any questions? Um, my name is Smiley Rob, according to my slides. I uh, work here at Atlassian as an iOS engineer working on Jira. And uh, that's my Twitter handle if you want to um, follow up after. Today, I'm going to talk about inline snapshot testing. So it's not just snapshot testing, if you've heard of that before, inline snapshot testing. Whoa. Yeah. So it's like rollerblades? Yes. It's like it just imagine roller skates and then rollerblades. Yeah. How much cooler is that? Yep. So um, it's something that we've been playing with uh, internally for a couple months, and uh, and I'm pretty excited by it. And I think you could probably walk away from this today and use this in your own code, and so on and so forth. So um, uh, so the way I'm going to structure this, firstly, I'm going to do a bunch of slides. Then we're going to do some live coding. Um, should be about 50-50. Um, firstly, yeah, live coding. No snippets, no nothing, just hard code, everything. Um, Snapshot testing, I'm going to talk about like uh, snapshotting to images, which is a pretty common way of doing uh, snapshotting. Uh, or I'm going to explain what it is. Uh, next, uh, snapshotting to strings, which is just game changing. Then, uh, as I was making these slides, I wanted to take you on the journey that we went through. So the first thing we knew about was images. And then the next thing was strings. And then we were like, let's just take this back to first principles and try and build their own and learn from the basics. Um, and then just like crescendo, inline snapshot tests. The coolest. Oh, great question. Fantastic question. Let's, let's, uh, let's get started and find out. Um, so, okay, snapshotting images. Now, when you write a test, you're supposed to do three things. You're supposed to arrange, um, act and then assert, right? So if you're snapshotting an image, you create your image, you mutate it in some way, and then you write some sort of assertion. Um, so Facebook wrote a snapshotting library that basically, it looks like this. Um, they open sourced it so you can use it. Um, and it basically takes your view and creates a PNG of it and stores it on the disk, right? That's, that's these three lines, writes it to disk. Um, the good thing about this is that it keeps that on record for regression tests over time. So the next time you run this with a slight change, it'll create another one in memory and then do like a, a visual diff, like a before we have re this on record, this is the one you just created, and you get this kind of visual diff on the right hand side. Does that, does that make sense? It's kind of, it's like, oh, that would be so cool. Um, but uh, point three, does anyone subscribe to the point three dot co um, a blog, I don't know, what, whatever they're calling, cool. Um, amazing. They, they went and wrote their own. And if you saw by that magic move. Uh, so uh, what this does is still takes the same view, but passes in another argument, um, this dot .image, um, which is, which is the, the, the game changer in this use. So the guys, uh, it's point free. The rest of this talk is going to be plugging how cool their library is. Um, this is a free video if you want to get the full tour of their library. I'm going to be talking about how we took it and butchered it and used it for our own course. So they have this function, um, assert snapshot matching your object as image. What the, what's really clever about this is it's, uh, these guys are like functional programmers, so immediately they made everything generic. So the input is generic. You give me a T, I don't care what your T is and you give me a function from T to image, like PNG data, and then they'll do the writing to the disk and the diffing and all that sort of stuff, right? So you could take a UI view, or you could take a UI view controller, or you could take a, a web view, or you could take an actual image and map it to itself, or you could take an NS uh, view controller or an NS table view. You could do uh, anything you can turn to an image, you could use this strategy for, right? So generics, wow, they're cool, everyone loves them. But then they went one step forward and said, not only is the input uh, generic, but the output is generic, right? And if you can not just write to, not just write as an image, you can write it as a string. So anything that you can pass in and turn into a string, they'll write it to disk and do the same comparison, right? So it's a pretty simple concept, but uh, this this was also this is actually a small snippet of one of our tests that goes on for hundreds and hundreds more lines. Woman in red dress. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is the test that we had before. This writes a binary file like a, an image to your Git repo, 
And with one extra line, we're now doing a recursive description, like just a text-based description of your views and their subviews, right? It's just a one-line change, it looks, like, it looks the same, you're just passing a different strategy, right? Pretty cool, pretty simple. Go watch the video online and they'll describe how, how, how cool this is. Also, um, recursive description is a, like an internal API on, on UIView if you didn't know. So it's, it is, there's nothing special going on in this, they're just recurs recursively calling this method. Um, and then uh, I wanted to take you on the journey that we went on. Uh, if you're just writing a test that compares strings, right? you create some sort of object, you mutate it, you turn it into a string somehow, surely, surely you just tried to sell us that this is impressive, right? You, you assert that this is equal to some sort of multi-line literal. But like, is that really impressive, Rob? I'm here to say yes, yes it is. Um, so with a little bit of, like if you put a little uh, sugar on, on top of these two uh, methods, you can kind of put it all into one, right? Assert that the snapshot of whatever my object is, as whatever the strategy for turning it into a string is, is this raw string literal. Does that make sense? So it's, it's kind of cool, it's kind of cool. Um, so we tried writing this ourselves, um, but we got this, this problem, right? So it's, you, you run the test and the test fails because something's got updated and you go and expand this out and you're like, example library, example value, text is empty, counter is something i equals zero, is not equal to, example library, example value, text is also empty, okay, and counter, counter library, i is zero. Does anyone know why these two strings don't equal? Trailing new line. Yeah, I, I, it took me a while to actually find that out. Um, so we can we can do better than this. Like, uh, and actually, the point free guys did solve this problem. So they've got a strategy called dump, which I'll go into in a detail. But it's like dump in Swift. And so you run the same thing, and you're saying like I'm snapshotting some something as dump, and it says, hey, this snapshot doesn't match. Oh, immediately nicer. And then you expand it out. It's a little bit noisy, but I'll take you through it. The first bit says, hey, I read this file on disk. The second line says, and I wrote what I found to a temporary file. And then the last bit says, if I do a diff between these two files, these are the lines that changed. Right? So I, I, I did a little bit of demo, uh, demo data and, and changed a, like a hello world to hello cocoa heads. And you can see here on line 16 that world got removed and um, cocoa heads got added. Right, so this could traverse a hundreds of lines file, and if you've made a regression, you'll see the exact line and the diff that it created. Right, so now we're getting something quite useful. Um, but, uh, um, but this actually has a sticking point that really doesn't work without a demo. Um, also, my, my slides didn't have any memes in it, so I quickly ran away, and uh, I say snapshot a lot in this talk, so I just needed to add that. Okay, let's do a demo. Um, everything I'm going to demo here is uh, going to be in a repo somewhere if you want to um, check it out later. I haven't quite sold you on it yet, but... Um, so it's just a... Uh, it's, uh, the, the repo itself is just a Swift package manager, just uses Swift package manager. Um, and if you just run Swift test, it passes. Hooray! That's, that's not that interesting. Okay, um, tough crowd. So um, I'll open it up in Xcode because that's a little bit more interesting. Thank you. Um, is that a good size? That's a good size. All right, so let's, let's play around with the world that I've created. So I've got this example value. Um, it has one property, one IVAR called text, and it has a default value. Um, and then it has this mutating function that takes another string and just sets it. Right? I'm, it's, it's not tricky. And if I go to my tests, I'm going to walk you through basically everything I've just done on the slides. So I'm just going to run this to make sure that it still works. Spoilers, I already know it works. Cool. So this is create a, create a value, update that value to say fake name, and then assert that the, I'm going to read the, the properties. This is probably a test that you've written yourself. Like, Knowing one of the IVARs um, doesn't match what you expected, and it passes. Um, I'll just jump back up here and run the test again. 
I wish my, my test ran this fast. Okay, so this is saying like hello world doesn't match fake name. Um, so I'll just type in hello world and it's an exclamation mark and you can imagine that this works as well. Okay, so let's get into um, first principles, how you would write this function yourself. Um, so I said that dump was a, a Swift function. Um, there's a version of dump where it just passes anything and it will print it out. Um, there's another version where you can uh, define an output stream, uh, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to print my, my value, right? And to do this next one, so this will output, it'll take a, a, a reference to uh, an in-out variable and then uh, write to it. And then I'm going to do something similar to this. And I don't know what it's going to give me, so I'll just try this. And I'm expecting a failure. And it gives me my string. Now, so again, we went through first principles. We're just comparing strings. It's super, super easy to do. But this, this dev loop of like handwriting this string, just keep that in mind of how annoying this process is. Copy this text. Let's use multi-line literals because they're the best. I'll just paste that. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And then I'll go ahead and... So this is exactly what the test expected to run. I'll go ahead and run that. Um, okay, still failing. Good. Okay, my I put too many spaces. Is this just painful to watch? It should be. This is intentionally painful. I run it again and it failed again. Trailing new line. Trailing new line, thank you. So you just add a random line there because that's how you make tests pass. <laughs> and then we go passing test. All right, cool. So there's no way I would make my team write this, right? So naturally, you make a function. Uh, what do we call it? Assert. Uh, make sure it's unique snap. Um, and I'll just move this all down here. Right? Uh, and then, actually, I'll keep that for later. Um, so it takes a string, it takes a value. So you can imagine a value of, uh, do I care what it is? Any? Um, and then uh, assert snap matches uh, expectation is another string. Um, and then I will do expectation x. Expectation, spelling's hard. Um, that'll almost work. Assert snap of my value. Oh, no, I've already got it in my clipboard. And run it again. And, ah. Feel free to shout out if it doesn't work. Um, coding live is hard. So. Okay, so that passes, right? So now we've got like some sort of helper method that just takes uh, something and dumps it. Um, but again, we could do better. We could trim this white space off the end. We could do some, some more things. But it's this, this when you get the, the test wrong, right? If I was to change uh, fake names, it's like, uh, hello, Coco Heads. All I get here, oh, it fails down here, which is, I could have fixed. Um, but the error message itself is like so not helpful, right? Um, and if I wanted to fix this, I'd have to copy and paste it and stuff. But alas, there are fixes to this. So um, a lot of copy and pasting. Let's scroll down a heap. So the guys at point three, they made their own library. Um, and I'm just going to use it. So snapshot matching my value as done. So the first time you run a test, um, I said that it writes it to a file outside of your, your, um, your code, um, and then it, it, it checks against that reference. But here it says there was no reference found, so it automatically recorded it. And it's located here. You can run open blah if you want to um, open it. Um, but it just says here, rerun the test, and it should, uh, should work. So I'll just go ahead and rerun it again. It worked. Now the problem with this I, I, I isn't immediately obvious, but I don't know if this passed for any good reason. 
<laughs> right? This could have been an empty string, and then it generated an empty string again. Green ticks, let's merge to production. Um, but we can do a little bit better than this. So, um, uh, so actually, let's go up and see what we made. I'll <coughs> zoom in a little bit, just to be polite. So, inside where my tests were, we create this um, snapshots folder. This was randomly generated just now, oh not randomly, but generated just now. Um, and inside that is a folder with the name of the test that, uh, the name of the test file that I just ran. And inside that is a file with the name of the test I just ran. Right, so it's implying all of that um, from, from the test itself. And inside here, I have the same text output that I just had before. Cool? So now the benefit of this, while it's kind of weird that it's out to the side, is it recorded this automatically, and so long as the file's perfect, it can, it can check for regressions for the life of this file, which is pretty cool. Um, but, uh, and also the other thing I said is that the diff is pretty cool. So if I said Cocoa heads and rerun my tests, I'm expecting this to fail, but the fail message should be nice and helpful. Hey, the snapshot doesn't match. And you expand it out, and it's like, what? Uh, it expected fake na a fake name, and it got Cocoa heads. Right, so that's, that's pretty helpful. Imagine you have 100 line diffs. This gets really helpful. All right, uh, I will just re-record this. A little helper. So record says, I don't really care what the file says, I'm just going to slam over the top of it. Uh, okay, and it says record mode was on, it immediately failed just to let you know that, uh, that it failed. And then I run it again, and I get green ticks and I merge to production. Cool? Does this make sense? Ship it. Makes sense. Ship it. Ah, it gets better. Uh, ship it in a tick. Because um, we're going to the mind blowing bit. Inline snapshot test, rollerblades of, of snapshot testing. Um, okay, so this is uh, a function that we wrote internally based on the the um, base the um, first principles that we kind of came up with, as well as like all the snapshotting strategies that the guys at Point Three made for us. Uh, my value still using dump for now. And then matches a string. And it's like, uh, I don't know what to put here, right? Because I haven't run this test before, so I'll just put an empty string. And then just for dramatic effect, I'm going to run over here, run my tests. And then instead of me having to write the test, it could just write it itself. Huh? Yes. Yes. So rather than me having to think of the, the first test that we write, right? Like, do the first thing. Um, I'll just delete that line. Do the first thing, call update, and then check that this exact property matched this thing. Like, why not just get the assertion to be written by itself? Right? And now this is the first time it ran, so maybe it has some random number generator in the middle of it, so we have to check that it passed, and it, and it did. So that's, that's pretty cool. Now let's break it. So let's go in here. Oh, let's go to tests. Go to source. Go to my counter value. Let's, let's add some more more data here. So imagine you want uh, to track your users using analytics and you want to count how many times uh, how many times they called this update method, right? How many times are they doing whatever they're doing? So now we have an extra IVAR that we want to keep track of. Uh, go to sources, tests, and my tests that I'm running. Let's have some more fun with this. Uh, oh, I'll just rerun. Sorry. Okay, so I get a failure. And um, when I'm looking at logs, I never knew if I was looking for the word error or failed or failure, so I just put all the error messages in the one thing. <laughs> it's much easier to grab for. <laughs> Pro tip. And obviously, you put emoji. So, um, so I wanted to see like what what was the what was the thing you created? So this is the new reference that they've just made. And then yeah, enjoy this diff of these two things. Like, I expected something, and then I had these two extra lines on the middle. So all I'm going to do to re-record, for dramatic effect, I'm going to dance over here. And then this just writes itself, like, over the top. Um, and, and just to use a more complicated example, let's try, like, a before and after test. Um, Right, so what was the original state? 
it's just as trivial to keep doing this, right? Um, and then it just writes over the whole file and does, you can see the i is zero and then i is one later on. So if I just relied on this first test and then some dev later added this counter, I've got no test coverage to know that that had any effect on it. Um, but now for free, I'm kind of getting this before and after test and it, it, can, it can test this out for me. So is that cool? Is that, is that pretty cool? Um, head nods, this is yes. <laughs> so um, so you, can, you can use the writing to reference um, just by using the point free library. Um, they, they did a really good job. This is absolutely awesome. Um, but um, just extending on that, especially for simple examples, it's really cool to have those tests in line and there's no extra files. Um, uh, yeah. Um, as, as an aside, um, we have one agent that builds all of our tests and then we have another eight agents that run all of our tests, right? It farms off that binary off to eight different agents and they run some subset of unit tests and UI tests. Um, so when we're checking for, if I go back to Finder, uh, if I go back to Finder, um, so when the, the machine compiles it, it compiles the path to this file and then it uses that in the, the test when it runs the test to check the thing. Um, however, you know, two separate machines have completely different file paths and every single time a snapshot test would fail. So we had to come up with this workaround to use like references, or like uh, resources, and add to the resource bundle of the running test case and that means when it's not as easy just to record because you have to record and then link it uh, manually. So it gets a bit tedious. So this is also um, trying to combat that. That not only is it co-located with the, the passing or failing test, but it's also getting around a, um, a, like a, a large scale um, test deployment. So I should just rerun this just to make sure that we've got green ticks. And that's, and that's that. So I, I do have one last sort of official demo before I start answering questions. Um, and that is uh, inline snapshot tests of NS objects. So if I was just to, let's just copy and paste because that's what good devs do. Oh, actually. <laughs> that's, that's right. If you guys ask questions on Stack Overflow, I, I won't answer. Um, okay, so I've just made this object. Um, allow me to show you what it looks like. If I go to sources, example object. It's an object, it has a name, some, some sort of plain string, and then it has ch children that, that are just recursively can go as deep as it likes. Does that make sense? Um, so you could imagine, you could replace in your head, this is a view with subviews, or this is a, um, any sort of tree structure. Um, let's come back here. And I've got, so I've just made this test object. It's got two nested objects. Um, it's got some three doubly nested objects and then a triply nested object. Um, with the emoji to show the, show the craziness of my test. Yes. A very unsatisfying, whoa. <laughs> so technically this is true, right? Like if this yeah. just wrote to a file and I didn't check that file, I would rerun it again and, and it would get the description. It would just dump this to, to memory and it would just do exactly the same thing every time. And I've got a passing test merged to production. Ship it. Ship it. Um, what, I, what I was actually expecting is something a bit cooler, right? Like I wanted a description. Let's get rid of that rubbish that looked like test object, right? And then kind of like uh, nested, one, two, maybe indented a little. What is it called? Doubly nested one. Boop, boop, boop. And then this guy's triply nested, dude. Cool. I expected something that like showed the, the tree, showed the hierarchy, like some ASCII art, if you will. Um, but you know that that's not going to work. And th the reason this all falls over is, so the way the snapshot library works is you give it a T and then you give it a strategy to go from T to difficult, the T to string. So the problem is this dump. If you just try and dump a, an NS object, you just get the object and you get the memory address and stuff, but that gets trimmed, which is also a nice thing. Um, but I've, ahead of time, uh, made my own strategy, right? Take this NS object. <laughs> I may show it, I don't know, but uh, this, is, this is the fun thing. And I'm just going to delete this because I'm sure I got that wrong. 
I'm just going to rerun it so it re-records. And, and if you just define your own, you can get this sort of same ASCII art. Right? So now, I, I mentioned before, you could imagine that this is, let's write some notes here. This could be a, a, a tree of some sort, like if you're doing a, an interview for Apple or so. Um, <laughs> or this could be views um, and subviews, right? Like traverse all the subviews and tell me about them as you go down. Um, for us, a really common one is a table view um, with sections, like traverse into all the sections and tell me what sections there are, and then uh, with sections, and then with rows, like tell me how many rows and, and what, are the, what do the rows look like. You could traverse deep, deeper and say that they have views, right, and get their subviews and snapshots and stuff. Um, you could imagine, well, I just want to, what am I trying to do there? Cancel. Um, also, like collection view. Same sort of thing. Uh, it's called items. Um, so any sort of tree, we had this pattern of building up uh, this ASCII art sort of thing, so we made it quite easy to do. But um, but really, you could do. You let your mind uh, fill in the rest of what you could do here. Um, so that's oh, I got to rerun the test to make sure I'm hunky dory. Thumbs. Cool. So um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, no one else but. <laughs> so we want to do some slides, I wanted to do some light coding, but I'm more than happy to answer some questions. Can you redo that animation at the end? So, um, so the so not every one of our tests are uh, images, right? Like our um, UI views. So yeah, so some of our tests are independent of device or um, orientation and, and even iOS version, right? Um, but yeah, for our view tests, we made a we don't use recursive description. We made like a Jira version of it that only reads out the properties that we care about. Um, so, for instance, if it's a label, I really only care about the, the font, the font size, um, and like the, the color of that label, uh, the color of the tint color, if you will. Um, there's more information I could tell you there, but yeah, it, it's independent of the pixel perfect snapshot. So while that's not, like snapshotting images is really awesome. It's really powerful, I can show my designer like this is what this commit looks like. I can just like take, yeah, I can traverse through stash or get a bit bucket and show screenshots as, to the designer, which is really cool, and bring designers in on a, on a PR to see the before and after. Um, but where it falls down is at scale. Like, like, as soon as the device changes slightly in iOS 12.2 uh, or something, it's, I have to re-record all of those binary data and then store that in Git forever. Right? And I, I, that was one of my, I'm not okay with that in, in our tech base. So, um, so going to text, yeah, you can just take whatever properties you want and just, just snap it. So, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> so we do have a bit of a debate about like, should, um, should we have more code coverage? Should we care about pixel perfect sort of information? And if I could imagine a continuum, right? Right down here, it's like a low level amount of tests. I'm gonna make any more jokes. And like you have no test coverage. And right up here, you have pixel perfect test coverage. I wanna get as close to that without slowing any of my devs down. So I feel like this is a nice compromise that you can come back a few steps and get really rich information about your um, screen without breaking it if the layout didn't finish laying out in, in time or something. So it's not that it's not important, but in our code base, it's been a priority just to get these landing uh, sooner, I guess. So there's no, no real use in trying to have test out, which is important. 100%. Yeah. Correct. Um, correct. Question here. Oh. Great talk. <laughs> Very <laughs> promising. So you were showing that initially you were using DOM for Swift uh, structure. So the DOM only gives you a particular one. So in case of an S object, you have to write your own. So, and somehow 
how it was using now, he said that he could have added new properties and immediately reflected the capacity and the failing capacity. But in case of you writing your custom description, you have to go back after adding the properties to your description, and you can forget to do this. So Is there a question? <laughs> <laughs> he works with me, he's trying to grill me on set. <laughs> Okay, so uh, very good question, random person in the audience. Um, it's a plan. It's a plan. So I try to make this look easy, right? Custom description. Wow, magic. Um, but if I jump to this, this is at the bottom of the file. Again, this is you can you can check this out if you want to do something about it. But I had to write like my own um, my own thing called snapshot description, and then inside that I had like a an initializer that mapped over all the objects and turned them to recursive descriptions and. If there was an extra property here, yes, I've now made te like uh, test code that now needs to be maintained. Um, I want to sort of answer that by saying, like, as a person that has written some pretty passionate tests, uh, some pretty graphic tests, uh, I've had like this is 300 lines with a whole lot of white space. I've had like 2,000 lines of test case, and there was really only like 30 lines of test. And there was like a lot of custom Swift to get anywhere close to this sort of coverage. So my answer to this is like, if you can make it, I believe this will cut down on the amount of custom code you'll have in, in your test files. Um, yes, there are implementations that you're going to have to make and you're going to lose uh, the adding of a, a counter over time. Um, if I come down here, like if you just added this and you weren't actually checking for it, then yeah, sure. Um, but I think the, the trade-off of if you write that custom thing, you're really only making it once. Another thing I should add is that we've, we can generalize certain patterns. Like I said, a, a common pattern for us is uh, snapping a table view. Go over the table view, go over all the sections, get all the rows, and then for each one of those rows, give me what the cells and their subviews look like. I can generalize that and put it over here, and you can use it in every one of your tests and every feature you ship from there. So um, we also have another common test case of getting JSON serializing that JSON into a struct using decodable, turning that into some sort of beautiful type that we pass, immutable type that we pass around the app, and then also converting it into a database object. And you should be able to go basically back and forth between any one of those three and, and, uh, and as you would. But writing a test to exhaustively go over every single property is almost, uh, don't, don't start. Um, but in, in our case, we can just snapshot each one of those three and then call back and forth and keep running that assertion back um, over very large documents. So if you can generalize your test, that's, that's the solution. And if you have to write custom tests, I found it to be more efficient than the uh, graphic tests I've written back in the past. Does that answer your question? Thanks. Great question. Uh, uh, the word you're looking for, you're attacking isomorphic. Isomorphic. I like that earlier tonight. Um, <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, nice. Wait for the mic. Okay, so so good question. Um, I showed before with the old snapshot test, right? Uh, where's my mouse? Oh, do you want to know my password? Um, is that like? With the old snapshot library, right? It already knows the name of um, the name of the the um, file that I'm writing to, and where it is, right? So we already know a lot of context about the the um, assertion that's being run. So if I can just know the line, know the file, read that file, um, and then just use Swift to sort of turn binary data into some strings, and then maybe an array of strings for each line find the line that I was on, then just insert some elements into that array, turn that array back into one big data blob and write it back to the same file that I already know about. It's like a couple of lines of Swift code. Super simple. Um, and it's it's in the example code that I've got. So, so, so you are reading that file? Yep. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, no, I'm not going to show you that. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's super straightforward. 